grab your TV dinners and set your microwave to massacre. Because we just watched Microwave Massacre and dinner is served on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. I still can't hum the song after all this time. I still don't even know. <laughs> Welcome, listeners. I am your waiter for this evening's uh, culinary feast. Ooh, My nice. name is Jason Hulls, and right alongside me here is Michael Hayes. I'm here because I'm here. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. And crazy Chris Hudson. Happy birthday! <laughs> that I I get. That, I believe, is a reference to uh, the star of our film, uh, Jackie Vernon, if I'm not mistaken, Chris. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, yes, we watched Microwave Massacre, starring Jackie Vernon, a comedian who is... Yes, um, <laughs> also known for for, for uh, what? Mike, I just I just questioned if he was actually a comedian. Like, oh, they what, had very, we, they had very different standards of funny in the fifties and sixties. Did you watch any yeah. of his bits, by the way? Did you look him up? What do you mean his bits? Like his comedy? Oh, oh no. No, just what you were about to say. I mean, I'm familiar with Frosty the Snowman. Yes, that's what I was going to say. He is known for voicing Frosty the Snowman. If you look at his IMDb page, it's like this Frosty, 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 and Microwave Massacre. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, the film was directed by Wayne Burick, Berwick, I'm sorry, and the only other movie, I'm sure you guys saw this, that he directed is was in 2005 called The Naked Monster, which I would <laughs> what? watch. Oh. What? Wow. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Wait, he directed that? Yeah. He's done a little I mean, bit of work in other it. departments, but huh. yeah, his only directing credits were uh, Microwave Massacre and, and The Naked Monster. Well, great. You guys, you guys already yeah. know what my next pick is for the, the show. There, you yeah, Mike could show up. Good job. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> um, let me give you a quick little synopsis of what this uh, movie is all about. Um, Jackie Vernon plays Donald, and he's a construction worker, and he is fed up with his wife's bad cooking. So he kills is he, her. Is and he really a construction worker? Well, I mean. you see a lot of lunch breaks. <laughs> he does we, work. He does work a truck. You see him, I think, literally driving a, uh, a bulldozer at some point. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Like not much, but more, more than let's say maybe a, a, a biker warrior babe okay. rides a motorcycle. Right. True. All right. Fair enough. Fair. Um, so we're led to believe he's a construction worker who uh, <laughs> kills his wife and turns to cannibalism to satisfy his appetite because he's fed up. Literally. Oh, that's, that's nice. Wah, wah. Quick takes. Mike, you gave that weird reference first off. Why don't you go first here? Uh, ne never, <laughs> never has domestic violence been portrayed so... Stiffly. <laughs> Stiffly. <laughs> Just <sighs> every every line is a labor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> every it, line of dialogue in this movie is from a everyone. Labor. Who do you think every delivers person. their dialogue the best? <laughs> <sighs> Fuck, dude. The that skinny weird construction guy. <laughs> Rosie. Rosie or the gay or the gay guy, Maybe the gay construction guy does. <laughs> the gay what about, guy um, what about May? Do you think? I, I mean, May at least seems pretty fired up. The wife, May. Yeah, yeah, but no, but Wasn't, no. Wasn't she <laughs> one of the Golden Girls? What? She no. looks like it's a like, Golden Girl. It's like, I mean, this is getting outside of a quick take length, but like every every line of dialogue has about two seconds of space between the next line. So sit down. You waiting for it to cool off? 
You know, uh, this really looks great, man. It really does. It even matches the chairs. <laughs> and everyone just is... It's as if they forgot to edit out the, the bad actors trying to think of their next line. It's just... Woof. <laughs> okay. All right, Chris, what do you have to say? Well... <laughs> That's what I was hoping. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. There were some good gags... And a lot of offensive humor, if watched in today's current society. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I need oh. to amend my description. It's not just between lines. It's between, it's in the middle of lines. There's yeah. just walking sized spaces. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, uh, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the, um... Oh, it's like Donald in the movie spends so much time talking to no one. He's, <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah. all his inner monologue, and it's all spoken really slowly, and it's almost like he's performing comedy or something and <laughs> saying it to the audience. Yeah. That well, I think right it's there. Jackie Vernon doing his bit. That's really, yeah. I, I mean, from what I read, that's what it's what he's doing. Yeah, I did actually look up. I did look up his some of his comedy, and is very much like that. <laughs> I really wish he kept his inner monologue inside, <laughs> but he he decided to share it with the the viewing public. <laughs> uh, well, okay, my quick take is probably the fastest of all here. Um, <laughs> tastes pretty good. <laughs> that's it. That's it. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, so I, I, yeah, I'm sensing a bit of a variation in uh, how we receive this. So this will be fun. Um, let's talk about the beginning. We uh, scary. It's scary guys. It's and I don't scary. mean this shot of the microwave where we zoom in and there's like a oh. dead head in the in the in the void of the microwave. You mean like the title card? I'm talking like what what's going on with those credits? Because if you <laughs> dropped right into it and you get no there's no like frame of reference there. I are you are you talking about that it jumps from a a microwave that is the size of like a, an oven like an actual <laughs> oven this day and age mm -hmm. uh, and then a head inside of it with like blood gurgling in the eyes a little bit to just a pair of big old titties <laughs> <laughs> that's talking what about I'm talking that about qu that quick jump cut from a murdered head a severed head inside of a microwave to just bouncing jiggly boobs <laughs> now Mike Mike I, I feel we have to warn our listeners that yes there are some big old jiggly titties but they're covered. <laughs> they're covered up. You've got to wait a full, like probably two minutes before you see them. Kind of. <laughs> all, all That's true. Up. The yeah. The most confusing. Uh, whatever. I will get to it. Yeah, it's it's just cross cut with construction. Oh God. Oh it's just God. you've got like her boobs and then a bulldozer and then uh, like and her, her denim clad butt. And those then, are called pants, Jay. Those are jeans. <laughs> Were they jeans? No, she wasn't wearing yeah, jeans. I mean, Were they jeans? No, she's got the, no, what no. do you mean denim she's clad got, butt then? She's got jeans. Like, she in this just scene. had these tight jeans and her butt. Yeah, like so well, like the same shot, like it's the close up of her boobs, then it's like a crane, then it's a close up of her butt, and then it's a bulldozer. And like and that's what you get for about a minute and a half while the credits are rolling. Yeah. So As if weird. anyone's paying attention to the credits while that's on the screen. Right. You know, who's well, going to look away from a bulldozer? And, and uh, Mike, I should, I, I didn't want to let this, this go. Um, you mentioned the size of the microwave. That brings yeah. me to uh, a <laughs> microwave fact that I have. Microwave fact! Ooh. Oh, yeah? Do yeah. You have a segment I, title? I, I have, yeah. Did you hear that? Right, that just happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, there yeah, it I was. Love, little, I love this, the ding at the end of the soundbite. That sound was bite. so good. Thanks. <laughs> the first microwave oven that was made by Raytheon, it was called the, the Rata Range. It was actually six feet tall and weighed about 750 pounds. And wow. people didn't buy them buy microwaves a lot at first because they cost hmm. around $5,000 to buy. And which they weighed 600 geez. pounds. They, and they weighed so much. And, and in today's you know, market, that would be $52,000. So a lot of people uh -oh. didn't want to shell out that much for something that they really didn't even get. 
and it's evidently as much as college. The I should this may maybe this is actually two microwave facts, but I just like this, so I'm gonna say it. Microwave fact. The it, the first microwaves were so powerful they could cook a full potato in 30 seconds. Wh- wow. What? Yeah. So wow. What we're seeing in this movie may not be so sensational after all. Yeah. When placed into the proper microwave historical context. Yeah. Sure. And J- Jay, how does that translate to the cooking time of, say, a human arm or a thigh? <laughs> we wait, can't get wait, into wait that. A minute, wait a minute. <laughs> well, mm. can we talk about this guy's sandwich? Oh, please. Yeah, so they're on lunch. The, <laughs> the first thing that actually gets into the narrative of this masterpiece. He's got a fucking giant crab sandwich. <laughs> like a full-on like, giant wait. king crab. You mean oh. like like it's crab salad? It's got no, some mayonnaise no. and some crab it's got and stuff. The shell no. and all. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Not only does that look like a delicious sandwich, that he's really kind of trying to trade to his buddies, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this allows Donald to make a bunch of uh, crab jokes, as in. Hey, what, what do you call that thing? I didn't have to call it at all. The little krill just followed me here. He's kind of a jerk to his wife, really. I mean, she goes way out of her she, way. She really wants the whole her whole character <laughs> is that she wants she's trying to find something else in life. And she just she wants something. And so she's like reaching out and trying to be a she puts it a connoisseur. <laughs> uh, that's very accurate the way she says it. No, it's well, not. Well, I feel bad but, because she is this total like, you know, 1950s, 1960s sort of portrayal of a shrew wife that yeah. if you look at it objectively, it's like she is trying really hard to keep this failing marriage afloot. <laughs> yeah, he, he is, just he is doesn't not give helping. a shit. No, he, th- they, they're not, neither of them would go well together because yeah. they insult no. each other all the time. Yep. But let's, let's, let's continue with this, this lunch break here. Um, so <laughs> oh, what, what, what derails the lunch break? <laughs> we still have to this yet. We, we I know. have spiraled well, out of Jay, control Jay, so many times guys, already. I'll be glad to go at, into this after I go to the restroom. I'm, I mean restroom. I have to go to the restroom. I mean restroom. Be right back. Oh. oh, 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 oh. oh. God, what is happening at this part? It's the it's oh, the knot hole girl as she's credited. <laughs> I, know, I know, but okay, so what happens, dear listener, is for this is going to make you want to watch the movie, I bet, a lot oh, of you. Totally. May I, it might change. <laughs> it ends weirdly. Um, the whole thing she, is there's so like, sexy. There's like this weird boob-shaped hole in some plywood. <laughs> literally cut out to the shape of boobs. And she, for some reason, presses her breasts up against well, it. Well, we find out later she's got this thing for construction workers, I guess. I guess. So she's like Maybe. looking through this boob-shaped hole to get a little peek at what they're building. But she's I not think. peeking through. It's her, unless her eyes are in her tits, she's not well, peeking through. No, I think she starts out peeking through, and some guy comes up behind her and grabs her ass. Okay, and what is then with what? that? What happens after that? And we don't know. Stick through the hole. It's, well, her, they come the, out, yeah, and her and, shirt comes off. Yeah, right. It comes <laughs> while well, so you see the the goods in the hole, like the full uncovered breasts sticking out of the hole, and then yeah. But you don't know what's going on behind her because the dude sneaks up and it looks like he's going to pinch her, but then she keeps making some pretty uh, pretty intense noises. Yeah, I'm not really sure what yeah. was going on there. Well, because right. it cuts back. Okay, so it, it, it shows her, like, her, her shirt kind of comes off and her boobs become bare within the, the tit hole of the... the <laughs> The plywood. That's the best then, sentence you've said all day, I bet. <laughs> well, you know. And then and then a guy comes up and like grabs her ass, and then she starts seemingly enjoying whatever's happening. But when it cuts back behind the plywood to see her, she's like bouncing up against the, the wood, but there's no one behind her. It's as if there, there's sex happening, but without a person having sex with her. <laughs> yes, exactly right. To make it weirder, though, you know, like to, when someone is like the, the construction worker who's trying to go to the breast room, I mean restroom, <laughs> runs at her because I don't know what he's going to do. He's just running full speed at her. And he doesn't and then, know what he's going to do. He, he doesn't wants to grab it's, a whole handful of tits. That's what he wants. Probably. Oh. Uh, but he Can't backs away him. or like she backs away as he gets up there and there's still no one back there. And then she no. moves off screen. And for a while, she's done. Well, I do. I like that the guy, that the construction worker, Rosie, running at her, like, he does this huge, like, almost comedic swipe 
at her breast right as she pulls out of the hole. I mean, it's so cartoonish. It's very it's wrong. So stupid. Yeah. Oh, very, very God. wrong. It's it's a weird it's a weird scene to have. Yeah. It's it's I mean it's obviously that like that male fantasy of she just wants to have sex with me, I just gotta go do it kind of and, a thing. And you know what's really great about this scene is that it really sets the tone. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It does. It has everything that it's, the rest of the movie has. Yeah. It's it's full of prop comedy slapstick and then odd odd <laughs> somewhat uncomfortable breasts. Because <laughs> it, it cuts to this bar. Oh, and yeah. there's a couple guys telling a story. But it's kind of a strip club too. It looks like a shithole. There, these two <laughs> dudes, these random new people, are telling a story about how one of them's trying to seduce a girl, and he tried to show her porn. Here's a fifty dollar room, Sam, decorated contemporary er- erotica and sex films on TV. And then she changed it to a talk show and fell asleep. And no one cares what this guy's saying. Like, like the bartender straight up says he doesn't care and that's it like they're done they're not yep. in the movie yep. anymore there's they're so done. many things in this movie that don't go anywhere <laughs> he I, my favorite character is the bartender by the way <laughs> I I genuinely his whole bit is that he doesn't want anyone to tell him a story yeah he doesn't he's, want he's not that like shoulder to cry on kind of guy no, no no and he's actively not that at one point he says see that license up there that's a liquor license, not a shrink license. <laughs> yeah. Chris, do you want to talk about the next thing that doesn't really uh, matter to the movie? Because it happens right after. Oh, yeah. Are we, t- are we talking about the neighbors? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the neighbors. <laughs> they're, they're throughout. Like every time Donald comes home, he sees the neighbors. They're always up to some crazy sexual antics. Like, they are liberated 70s swingers. Which, I guess yeah. this movie was actually filmed in 1979, so it's about that like time period. But the first time you see them, there's like a naked girl that runs by the window, chased by some shirtless dude. And they go back and forth a little bit, and Donald kind of gets an eyeful of the like boobs pressed against the, the window. But then they go away, and the husband of the couple... The, of the neighbors comes by dressed in full on lingerie. Yeah, <laughs> like baby. At him. Like garters and everything. Yeah, like, yeah. And then his wife was... comes over and like his wife is like super into Donald. She's always doing something. Every time he comes home, she's out there doing something suggestive. Like mm-hmm. pretending to well, I mean she's got a later on she's got a garden hose and it looks like she's peeing in the garden, but she's really watering her garden. She's uh, digging uh, in, in the flower bed uh, with a dildo. Slash, <laughs> well, it's a, vib- a vibrator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. like, what is that vibrating? Because it's, it's obvious. And then it's... And, That's one and way to plant flowers. She's in the garden. I mean, she yep. is leaving the door open for Donald to make a move. But, you know, it goes nowhere. I thought at least she would be one of the victims. But no. Oh, yeah. The stuff with the neighbors doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't kill any of them. He doesn't. I don't even think he really. No, he does talk to her once when she's holding a cat. That, yeah, he I don't think that her. counts as talking. <laughs> he just says pussy at her like five times. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, a, what a nice pussy. Yeah. yeah. In reference to the it's cat. So weird. Pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a little uh, kink tank for you guys. Oh, what do we have? Some sort of kink tank. Ooh. I was hoping you did. Yeah. The reason none of those those neighbors were murdered within the movie is because that, that was a different movie, and I wish I was watching that one instead. <laughs> 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 That's what. That's it. That may not be factual. <laughs> <laughs> well, it probably is factual that you would rather be watching a different movie. Yeah, you know, pick and choose the, the truths, and there might be a little lie in there. I don't know. There might be some fabrication. Whatever. Don't okay. judge me. Okay. I want to see the garden dildo. I want to check that shit out. <laughs> we, uh, oh. we next meet. Then we actually get more into May, and that we, we sort of touched on how they start fighting, and she's trying to feed him something. Par- Parisian dish, I believe. Yeah, she makes some cordon bleu. Jay, I believe it's Parisian cuisine. I'm sorry, Parisian cuisine. Say that again. Parisian cuisine. All right. Somehow, uh, 
It loses something in the translation. It's Parisian cuisine. <laughs> I'm a connoisseur. <laughs> okay, now there is one funny thing. I know you're you guys are kind of riding Don a little, little bit here, but she she goes to turn off the lights and to like light some candles, and he goes, I've already seen it. That's a good line. Uh, the right kind of food deserves the right kind of atmosphere. She tries to light this candle that just goes up in flames. And he's just like, you know what I said? I thought your food belonged in hell. <laughs> And then, the whole thing is also, just Jackie Vernon comedy. Yeah. She asks him why he won't eat it. He's like, why aren't you eating it? And then he says the most convoluted insult. That's like asking men why they climb mountains. Cause it's there. <laughs> like, I, I, like, it took me too long to get it. Like, that's, like, that's not a good joke. It's not a good joke, Jackie. I, I, didn't, I didn't write that one down, but I did also take note in the same conversation when she's hoping that this meal and this atmosphere will get him in the mood. Because yeah. he really oh, yeah. makes sure to tell you he has not had sex in like 20 years. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like 1962, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the year. <laughs> You're a walking contraceptive. You know that. He, 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 this is where it comes to like that he really wants something simple. He just wants a bologna and cheese sandwich or whatever, and he's sick of all this cruising or whatever. <laughs> and, and she even points out, she's like, even the dog eats better than you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he does. <laughs> the next day at lunch, there you go. He spreads fucking, as if it's peanut butter, oh, spreads God. dog food on a, a white bread sandwich and eats it and it seems to be enjoying himself. Well, yep. it is yep. better than that giant crab sandwich. Well, that thing was made of plastic, so yes, I agree. <laughs> Every time we cut into work, it's always lunchtime. And always. who shows up again? The knot hole girl. Oh, yep. yeah, and baby. She is in some short, short terry cloth shorts. Yeah, Chris, don't you have those? I do. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sit back down, Chris. Sit back down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's really into these construction workers, especially the one that's shirtless and super ripped. And they get together, right? They hook up. Yeah. Credits, credits. They get together in credits. <laughs> no, it is the most 1980s. Stereotypically uh, homophobic, sort of. <laughs> like the guy yeah. gets a load of her chest in this tube top or whatever she's wearing and just freaks out. Well, she touches him. Oh, yeah, yeah she touches she, him. She yeah, rubs she his rubs. chest. Yeah. And then he freaks out and yells at the other construction worker in like a, a gay affect. Um, yep. And just, you know, don't do not do that. Don't, why, I told you not to do that again. So apparently it's happened before. Yeah. And now he claims he's got a rash because a woman touched him. <laughs> and then Rosie starts making out with her. Yeah, just just out of the blue. She's like, okay, well, that guy, uh, that guy has something wrong with that, that guy. So I might as well make out with you. Do you think I'm a nice person? Well, of course I do, honey child. You don't think I make a play for every lady who comes by here, do you? You got chemistry. He's like this white like po possibly Jewish like just skinny skinny guy wearing a tank top and it's just like just string beans, you know. And yeah. <laughs> but he's supposed to be some sort of cool construction worker guy. Evidently it works. <laughs> but that's another like it just that's another thing. It doesn't go anywhere. There's so much and somehow I'm I was still entertained. I don't know. Maybe it was the power yeah. of Jackie's performance. I, <laughs> I think yeah. that's it. As sad as it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, the low, the low rumbling musings of Jackie Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> Happy um, birthday! I wake up in the middle of the night dreaming about food I can eat with my hands. Then he gets drunk. He gets, he gets. He, oh yes, he gets drunk and then starts fighting with May some more. Yeah, he, well, not just fighting. This is where uh, <laughs> this, this is where, is where it all cops, goes. This down. is where it turns in. Yeah, the episode of Cops happens here. The uh, it's where the titular microwave massacre happens. He gets a mouthful of water and spits it all over her spinach dinner. Oh my god! It's being a little out of line. <laughs> you pig! Yeah, <laughs> a pig, and, and this should look like a sty. But you don't. Yeah. See, oh yeah, you do. I was gonna say you do see the actual murder happen, and it's. Uh, did anyone catch what the actual murder weapon is? It's not the katana, right? Because the katana is a fantasy he has early. Yeah. He, he kills her with a salt grinder. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't he throw Beats some salt on her too? And he throws no. He throws some salt over his shoulder for luck. Oh. And so then he has to throw out all the exotic meat in the freezer to make room for her body. <laughs> and well, and he doesn't remember doing it the next day. He doesn't day remember too. it at all the next day. No, yeah. yeah. He wakes up and he's like trying to find her and then realizes me. I'm hungry. Where's my breakfast? Hey, May, will you hurry up? Where's my breakfast? Yeah. And that bitch just shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> and then he realizes she's in the microwave and is like, He's in the microwave? He he's bitching the whole time that he he fucking hates his wife and the food she makes. And then in the morning, hey, I'm hungover as shit. Where's my where's my food? Like a typical oh, piece of shit. I'm starving. Oh, maize in the microwave. Double take. He, he also claims that that's the way she would have wanted to go. God damn it. Yeah. Well, it's about right here, though, that I realized that this guy sounds awfully familiar. I didn't realize uh -huh. he was, in fact, the voice of Frosty the Snowman yep. until yes. I paused the movie at this point to look him up on IMDb. <laughs> yeah. It took yeah. me get half an hour to figure that out. It's completely obvious in hindsight. I think the best way, if you're unfamiliar, like, you can get the sound of his voice by that reference. Like, anyone... Everyone's seen Frosty the Snowman. They they understand that voice. But his performance in this movie just hit me. It's it's uh it's as, as if someone gave Rodney Dangerfield like 30 Xanax and just <laughs> and just let him give his lines. It is so fucking just no energy, but that same style of comedy. It's funny you say that because in the limited amount of research I was able to do Apparently, the filmmakers tried to get Rodney Dangerfield for this role. That makes first time. a lot of sense. That it was does. that was their first choice, and apparently, he wanted too much money. Yeah, I can't imagine Rodney Dangerfield doing that movie. Hey, it would be so much better. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there would be a lot more energy to it. We'll say that much. I think I think Jackie Vernon only looks at the camera once. But like Rodney, every line Rodney would just like <laughs> deliver to the camera, give that big eye, like yeah. <laughs> it would be fucking great. <laughs> would you say that? Um, so the the murder of May, you know, he he killed her. It seemed he was drunk, but then he regretted it. Would you say it was an accident that he killed her? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, no, no, no. I think he really wanted. Okay, well that actually brings I mean, me to another microwave fact that I have. So microwave <laughs> fact. <laughs> God, I love that fucking sound bite. Ding! Thanks, thanks. I spent hours on it. <laughs> <laughs> the microwave was actually invented by accident. Um, there was, what? yeah, it's true. I knew that. Um, yes. a, a man named Percy Spencer was standing in front of an active radar set, and he was working on magnetrons. Which shut up! What? Yeah. Don't. Don't finish this sentence. Yeah, and he, he noticed that a candy bar in his pocket had melted. Oh, God. I was worried it was him. <laughs> he was a... No, he did not melt. <laughs> he realized he melted. He was a leading expert in radar tube design, so he experimented, oh. and he created this uh, electromagnetic field within a metal box that would uh, go on to be the thing that we um, all did use to cook our food. And did he work for Raytheon? I do not know where he worked. I bet you he did. I bet you he worked for Raytheon, and then that they fucking co-opted his... They probably gave him, like, 500 bucks, and they're like, all right, we own it now. Probably. He probably got screwed over with his invention. Well... Because yeah. we've never heard of him. Yeah, well, a quick, yeah. Look, a quick look at his Wikipedia page indicates he died about 13 years before the release of Microwave Massacre, so he did not see where his invention led. <laughs> Wow, Chris, that was an excellent microwave fact. <laughs> microwave fact! <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, he did work for Raytheon eventually. So he became a senior vice president. All right, so let's talk about the cannibalism that gets going. Yeah, so what? How? Wh did I miss why and how? Like, I mean, I know... 
I see he, he's May's in the microwave. Right. <laughs> he also puts her in the freezer. Yeah. But then he shows up at the construction site with the tin foil, like I don't know, it's her short well, ribs or well, something. I think, well, I think what happened is he he was really hungry and he had all that meat that he brought out of the freezer <clears throat> after he chopped his wife up. But if you remember, the hand fell out of the freezer into the garbage. And so the next day, uh, he's starving. He just picks one of these, you know, tinfoil wrapped pieces of meat at random <laughs> and says, hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. After he takes a big bite of it. And then he pulls the foil off and he realizes, oh, it's his wife's hand. And what does he say when he figures that out? Does he freak out? Oh, my God, I just ate my wife. No, nope. nope. I'm pretty sure he just takes another bite. <laughs> Yep, he takes another bite and he's says, into it. oh, May did have good taste. <laughs> or something like that. Yes. <laughs> That's his reaction to realizing he just ate a human that he murdered the night before. Oh, God. <laughs> he's so just deadpan the whole time. But everyone at the construction site fucking, like, oh, like God. dogs. They're just, they, what you eating there, man? What you eating? What you eating? <laughs> they, they can't get enough. Oh, they, my God. They, if I brought any food with me to, to lunch. If someone wanted a bite, they could have, and I said, okay, they could have one bite. They fucking pass that shit around multiple times. Yeah. It's that good. Well, to be fair, he's got like eight pounds of ribs. So he's just eating. This it's true. It, it's ribs. like three feet of ribs or something. It's, There's it's, plenty to go around. There's a lot of little shots in this movie that you just, just random shots thrown into the movie at different times. Weird things. Sure. And one of them that happens, which I guess this one kind of makes sense, but you also see him preparing May kebabs. Like he'll, he's <laughs> yeah. got veg yep. veggies yeah. and then her other hand. So God. he's working Ugh. on different recipes. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, that's right. They're like, oh, you know, this is pretty good. And he's like, I'm working on making it better. Mm -hmm. and every time every time they have lunch, he's always got more May and makes them their own sandwiches. And he's getting better and better. They're just you know, yeah, eating it up, eating, literally. Yeah, they love it. So somebody tell me about uh, DDD. <laughs> you, Chris, oh, I don't remember what that is. Oh, DDD. Triple D. So, yeah. Oh, oh now I get it. Where the line is, have you ever been screwed in 3D? <laughs> <laughs> That's no. the one. <laughs> well, what? I, sort of, the person. I think, I, I think they named her that just for that joke. Probably. Very, yeah. very likely. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, um, so Donald goes back to Sam's. And he just wants to drink alone, I guess. And uh, this prostitute is there that Sam kicks out. And she totally comes on to Donald. He just has no clue. He's, you know, he's a 60-year-old man. He's not really... He just killed his wife. You know, he's really thinking about going home <laughs> and making dinner. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, but I guess he finishes his drink. He goes outside. And uh, DDD is still coming on to him. So he doesn't really realize she's a prostitute, I think. But he invites her back to his place anyway, and uh, yeah, they go back there, and he is shy as fuck. She is <laughs> yeah. sitting on his couch yeah. <laughs> in her lingerie, and he's like, oh, it's vacuuming day. Oh, it's laundry day. And he's thinking of excuse after excuse <laughs> to not sleep with her. You know, he's Well, he a, hasn't had sex since 1962. That's, that's so. true, but that is about yeah. to change. Oh, because uh -oh. so, they are going to screw in 3D. Yeah, so, Continue. Uh, if you've ever wanted to see the voice actor of Frosty the Snowman no. have sex. No. I never screwed in 3D. Hey, 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 listener. You are when you in get to this luck. part of the movie, skip it. Skip it. <laughs> no. Jump ahead a minute. <laughs> no. No, he's fully clothed. You don't really <laughs> see it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You see his face and you hear the noises. <laughs> and it's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. It is a crime. It's a fucking movie crime what happens here. I, I will admit. I'll also tell you that it's murder. a crime that, that she... <laughs> Is willing to do tricks for him, but he wants Yugoslavian tricks, and she doesn't do any Yugoslavian tricks. Talk about a talk about a dated uh, joke, right, guys? <laughs> Yugoslavia, as if that's a place. <laughs> and he's fin he finishes, and then he suffocates her with a sunflower pillow. Yes. Mike, do you need those sounds in there again for the movie crime to happen twice? No, again? Guys, edit all that out. Let me just give you a Slav fact here real quick. Uh, Yugoslavia was, was founded in, in 1918, um, uh, and it stopped being a country in 2006. All right, put that over instead of the sex. <laughs> 
<laughs> as soon as you send me the Yugoslavia effect uh, soundbite. <laughs> I think it's at this point, though, that we find out just why he hasn't had sex since 1962. <laughs> yeah, because of the noises and faces no, he makes. No, it, it's, that's why we gave up watching him have sex in 1962, Mike. He actually... <laughs> Wait, what? He actually... What were we doing in 62? What, what did he do? What? What? But I, I believe his actual no. line is... This is hard work. Now I know why I gave up sex. Oh. <laughs> and then we get the, I'm so hungry, I could eat a whore. <laughs> so uh. he does. So he yeah. does. God he does damn it. the same thing. He cooks this it. is so fucking. I, stupid. It's a slippery slope. Oh now. god! I really liked that. The next day, you see him going to a cooking store because he's trying to up his game and how to cook. Oh, yeah. oh god! And, this part. Oh. And he he asks for a six foot cookie sheet from the guy behind the counter. To which the response is. No, sir. We are fresh out of that popular size. <laughs> oh, and he also you asks know. for like Ugh. ten gallon mason jars. <laughs> I think. I think the, what's going to happen here, Ugh. whoever's listening to this, is going to make it sound like there's these great jokes and zingers throughout because that's a pretty good bit. <laughs> Except they're that's all not. delivered poorly, and they're we are condensing the shit out. Oh yeah. god, there's so much not winners involved. <laughs> And the, of the movie uh, isn't that it's like 70 minutes long thank thank christ so. <laughs> and and it's, yeah it's a short movie and and i would like to point out too that the microwave honestly has not been used hardly at all yet in the entire <laughs> no. movie he he is killing people and he is eating them but you do not see the microwave in use virtually at any at any point so far. That's because I think the titular microwave massacre doesn't happen until the very end. Oh, and I love the twist. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll get I, was there. Gonna, I was about to get drop a microwave fact. Microwave fact! <laughs> I was going to say that no one is ever massacred with a microwave. I have a microwave fact. Microwave fact! <laughs> Just liberally spreading this shit out. All right. <laughs> My family got their first microwave in 1983, the same year this movie came out. <laughs> wow. How do you know? How do you yeah, know that? I don't know if I, I believe that, kind of Did you remember. call mom? <laughs> that might uh. be some microwave fake news. <laughs> so, so after this... I, I think this is right after this as my I think my favorite scene in the movie where he he kills another prostitute or another woman or whatever she is but as he's doing it in sort of a kinky kind of thing that's supposed <laughs> yes. to be doing he's uh, spreading I think mayonnaise yes. all over her just giant mounts of mayonnaise and puts her in a fucking sandwich like a giant piece of white bread as if this is fucking like like this is Kentucky oh, Fried Movie or something it's just oh. fucking the most ridiculous thing this happens here the total Totally right, but the thing is, this is another one of those scenes with zero context. It's literally you cut in. He's asking for the cookie <laughs> sheets. He gets kicked out. Suddenly, there's a naked woman on a table, and he spread mayonnaise on her. There's you don't know who it is. I thought that was another daydream. It just came from out of nowhere, and nothing happened except he just put her in a giant fucking sandwich. Right. You don't know <laughs> if it's a dream or if it's seen. real. I don't know. It, it's just a faceless naked oh. woman. <laughs> laying there was in his he's what's what's sorry what is he spreading there chris some mayonnaise oh yeah there it is <laughs> there it is <laughs> uh that's that's gonna be a t-shirt chris we're gonna get you a mayonnaise t-shirt going mayonnaise for the people to buy <laughs> guys guys then there's another really good scene uh with with the chick <laughs> you mean the chicken <laughs> the literal chick yes oh god <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Guys, I've got some insight on the uh, the studio. I've actually got some audio from the the, the creation process of this movie. I've unearthed the archives. <laughs> wow! Uh, let me what let me play it here done? for you. Let me okay. let me play it for you here right now. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, what if uh, what if the chick is actually a chick, huh? Then we could just tell a bunch of chick puns. That'll be great, eh, hey, Ralph? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Mark, it'll be great. We'll just do all the chicks. All the, she'll be a chicken. It'll be real good for the jokes. <laughs> That, that's for actual archival footage. That, that so is... Wow. I totally believe it. 
Yeah, there's a so, woman in a fucking chicken outfit, and then he picks her up, they fuck, and he makes a bunch of chicken puns the whole time. <laughs> you get too good looking a chick to go around looking like a chick. Is this the one he takes to her home and starts shaking her while she's naked? <laughs> I think so, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. She's sort of awkwardly sitting on the couch, and he's bent over her, literally just shaking her while she's naked. And then she's dead and cut up. She, next scene, she's dead and cut up. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say Donald doesn't try to get help, though. <laughs> no, he does oh, go God. to a therapist and just does stand up for him. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's like, uh, this is probably where Dr. Katz got the idea. They saw this movie and thought, oh, wait, the only good part of this is this, and then took it and ran. And, hold on. He also says, this is a particularly sick and weird. Donald says, when I get really bored, I like to drive around and see how many squash dogs I can count on the freeways. Yeah. I have never been nearly that bored. Well, let me tell you, if you're not dis disturbed and disgusted by the blatant offensiveness and misogyny through the entire film so far, that part will get you. The poor puppies. At least the doc understands everything that's wrong with his brain and then uh, pr gives him, like, some medication that'll help him and, you know, everything's fine. No, no. In fact, the doctor misunderstands everything he says. <laughs> Except for the last part where he's talking about eating the girls and he's like, by the great Gatsby, go down on her. <laughs> yeah, he, he just thinks it's kind of lingus. Yeah, it's all, yeah. He, yep. a little comedic yeah. misunderstanding. Mike, do you have any sort of kink tank for that or? Uh... Uh, I've got a kink tank. Oh, what do we have? Some sort of kink tank. Um, that's the second uh, oral sex joke of the movie. <laughs> oh. We're not reaching very far for these this time. Sorry, I didn't prepare see, any kink I, See, tanks. that's where I thought that you were going to talk about how another word for cunnilingus is microwave massacre. Oh. 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 What are you, Jackie Vernon? Oh. <laughs> another word for cunnilingus no. is microwave uh. massacre. So, yeah, then we have Donald cutting up another woman, and he's reading a cannibal book, and then the microwave goes off. So that... I noted was like finally finally the microwave is actually getting used get some microwave action at last yeah but he then he sort of it, this kind of comes out of nowhere he has a little bit of a heart attack or something he, he sort of yeah. passes yeah. out he does. I mean you could play it off as a uh, you know kind of feelings of guilt but eh, it's probably a heart attack yeah um, and this is the God. weird thing with May's head, right? Next. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. May's sister shows up because she hasn't heard from her in a while. Yep. And she's not stopping. Like, Donald tries to just get her out of the house, and she doesn't go for it. She rightfully assumes that May is being kept against her will or something. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald's yeah. that kind of a dude. Yep. <laughs> and then, okay, so, like, he takes the head and tries to prop it in the bed. And the head is yeah. decaying to some extent, and it's a severed head. Or you know, it looks like kind of a like a dummy head. Really, it looks like a dummy head. It does. Well, yeah, it for us, but it's in the reality of the film. It's supposed to be her decomposing skull. Yeah, <laughs> and so he props it in the bed and tries to convince uh, Evelyn that yeah. that look, she's sleeping. It's all it's all good. Uh, uh, but but then he kills her with a hot dog bun. No, he doesn't kill her. No. No, he but he tries. Kill. He does. He, tries. he attacks her with. He what? attacks her with a hot dog bun, guys. He <laughs> takes a hot dog bun, and says, "This is what I'm going to use to subdue this woman." <laughs> well, it works. It works. Yeah. I, mean, I guess. Then, so he jams it into her mouth and ties her up and yeah. puts her in the closet. Yeah. What What I love about that is every time you see her, because when you see Donald going out getting his jacket out of the closet, or whatever, every time you see her, the bread is getting more and more green and moldy. Yes, thank you <laughs> yeah, for saying that. Good. I was hoping I wasn't the only one that noticed that. That was pretty. Uh, that's a good, yeah. good bit. Oh no, no way, not her. <laughs> Donald gets his pacemaker checked out, but evidently he's in good shape, uh, right? Instead of regular physicals, I should have regular tune-ups. I guess, well, I don't know what doctors, he's going to a shitty therapist, and he's got <laughs> the worst doctor in the world if that doctor gave him a bill of clean health. Like, there's no way. Well, he can't find the heart to begin with. Question time for you guys. This was another okay. completely 
baffling thing. <laughs> I know, what, know what one this is. is. This yep. is yep. one is. shot. I think it's one shot in the movie. <laughs> one shot. One shot. This yes. guy pulls up in a car <laughs> and he gets out and there, there's a thing that says, is it Buana or <laughs> Buana like Meats? Bu- Buana Meats. And he gets out with a pan. Well, Jay, Jay, before we do that, did you see the subtitle like on it? No. It says Buana, Buana Meats. Let us cater your next pagan ritual. <laughs> okay. So, huh? Okay. <laughs> this goes from out of nowhere. <laughs> he gets out of the car and you see he has a pan and there's a hand in it. <laughs> and then he walks off screen and he never comes back. That's it. He doesn't interact with Donald. What is going on with that? He doesn't interact with anyone. It's just there. Why would you even put that in there? Jay, I thought you were going to talk about something else that was baffling that happens right around here. Well, I think where, I know where you're going, so go there. Okay. Go ahead. Where, Take he, it. where he gets the new prostitute, she takes her top off, and then thunder <laughs> sounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's she, not raining. It's very odd. It's just that. And then suddenly he... <laughs> He's wearing an apron. Like he, tur- she takes the top off, turns around. He's in the hallway. He's wearing an apron, a knife, and a carving fork. Just like, mm, yes, I'm gonna kill you. Except that's, you know, more acting than he ever did. I like when they, she hears the thunder noise. She makes she makes a point of looking out the window, and it's yeah. broad daylight. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Everything's so what fine. What was it? I mean, this is. Uh, I think we also kind of glossed over the fact that, like, when the sister came in. Uh, to to find May, May's head was transporting around the house. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was another thing. We also get right here the the neighbor peeing or looking like she's peeing in the dirt when she's like. Yeah, this is watering. where she's watering her garden. She's watering but dirt. She, that's it. She's yeah. just got a hose and she's watering dirt. But she's yeah, doing yeah, it baby. suggestively to kind of get Donald. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I guess, but to, it's part to of the no porn. End. It's the porno they're doing next door. Then the people are talking at work about how there's a lot of girls going missing. See, I thought they were going to tie it back to that Buana meat thing. <laughs> like there would be like Donald would get away with it because they're going to frame Buana meats. And that, yeah, I mean, you've got it right there. Yeah, there's the story. Like much more interesting movie. And and then it, maybe yeah. there's a villain because the, right now yeah. the big villain is just pretty much Donald. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do like, though, uh, the next day at the construction sites, Rosie and the other construction worker dude, they want to go out and, uh, Don, you know, Donald might go along, but they are going to go to see a wrestling match because there are lots of hot ladies at the wrestling match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pick up some <laughs> ring rats. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. And it's on Donald to bring the snacks. God damn it. Yep. Per usual, Mike, uh, do you want to go out on a limb and say what he's supposed to bring? Uh, I don't remember, but it's probably a hooker. Well, no, Mike, it's Peking Chick. Wow, you mean Peking Duck, don't you? No, I mean Peking Chick. Oh, God. He has to go (laughs) pick up an Asian girl. And That's right. God, yeah. He, yeah, he's like, I need to go down to... Uh, yeah, god damn it. Now we, we start to flirt with the racism a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad what happens next happens next. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I didn't really want to go down that route, personally. They end the movie before it gets too bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Thankfully. You don't ever see who he gets, but you just see him chopping up a girl, right? Or sawing up a yeah. girl. and With just sort of like your... I guess you could say stereotypical sort of racist Asian effects laying around sure. like glasses or something. And I don't know. I don't remember exactly what else there's. There's like some music that's sort of like, I don't know, yeah, what yeah, you would yeah. imagine we like it. You, some offensive <laughs> we get, music we would get be. It. Yeah, yeah, we get it. <laughs> then, yeah, we get like a weird twist here. Yeah, he dies. <laughs> yeah, he dies. Well, yeah, but we don't see him die, though, right? We just see his friends come in. They are all dressed up in their 1970s finest, getting ready for the wrestling match, wondering where Donald is. And they see him just lying there on the kitchen floor. Mm -hmm. And they're not really worried about it, but they, for some reason, they look in the microwave and see a bunch (laughs) of arms and legs. Yeah. They're not really that thrown off by it. 
Well, they realize what they've been eating, though. Yeah, their their reaction is not appropriate, though. <laughs> the level of horror is not. But I mean, look, what else is going on in this movie? I wouldn't say that there's a broad emotional <laughs> spectrum <laughs> happening here. <laughs> so, it is pretty deadpan across the board. So, given what we've got, I think it's fine. But you're right. <laughs> Uh, then, yeah, they find, oh, yeah, so, okay, I like this bit at the end, too. So they, they find out, like, he's dead, and then it kind of cuts to, like, they're moving shit out of the house, like, they've sold the house, and, A, the microwave is noted to be not included in the sale of the house, which, <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. I don't know who's interested in that, but then... <laughs> When pe- the movers find s- find something in the closet they- that hasn't been touched in a while. <laughs> now, I gotta say, I read I read online that the guy that finds the sister in the closet, <laughs> yeah, is Paul Rubens. Wait, what? Yeah, what? it's Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, and no. I I pa- I don't I don't know for sure. I I paused it just to see, like, because I didn't believe it and. I can see a resemblance. I I'm, I don't want to go and say it's definitely him, but apparently that's the the rumor on on the internet that Pee Wee Herman finds the the sister in the closet. I thought it looked like Adrian Brody. It does. Yeah, I guess it kind of. I could see that. Maybe Adrian Brody and Pee Wee Herman are the same. I mean, you've never seen them in the same room together, have you? Oh, that sounds like a dark Hollywood. Uh, dark Hollywood. Fuck, guys. I'm looking at that picture that might be Paul Rubens, and it fucking... What? Maybe it is. <laughs> Think so? Like, he's got a beard. Listener. Listener. Yeah, he's got a fuck-off beard. He's got like a, like a fucking... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, wow. <laughs> and like long hair that's mm-hmm. parted to the side. Well, I it, think the director is one of those guys. One of, one of the movers is also the director. But I couldn't wow. find any pictures of him. That is an interesting look for Paul Rubens, yeah. if that's him. Yeah. Let's tweet at him. Let's tweet uh, at him. Yeah, all right. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. But, but hey, we missed the thing that actually killed Donald. We right. see oh, him in the microwave. Yeah. There's two things in here that, that happen related to that. What is it, Chris? Oh, well, all right. Well, you see <laughs> inside, just inside the door of the microwave, you see a little sign that says, Caution. This microwave may affect pacemakers. Boom. Which, dun, dun, we find dun. out earlier, Donald had a pacemaker. It all comes together. It all comes together. But wait, there's more. Oh. Is there? Well, uh, after the movers are, uh, after, after they completely ignore the sister in the closet, uh, yeah. the camera goes into the, the garage where May's head is still on the workbench. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. I don't want to... Th- that's a big deal. But there's that, one yes. other thing. I, I, I need to say this detail before you go into that bonkers thing that we're going to spend time talking about. <laughs> All right. Um, when the movers are moving everything, they notice the the wires are... Oh, it, the, yeah. The microwave, right. the wires are messed up. And they comment that it's a death trap for anybody with a pacemaker, kind of reinforcing yeah. the sign. Yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. also yeah, wired yeah. wrong. So, uh-huh. okay, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, this is so, all going to tie together in a second. It's all going to tie together. I, I, just, I can't wait. The camera moves in closer to the to May's head, and the and her eyes just glow. And that's the end of the movie. I personally appreciated the extra couple layers that the movie stacks on in the last couple minutes. So, <laughs> my question is... Setting aside the fact that May may actually have been a demon the entire time. Let's set that aside for a second. <laughs> Did May want to kill Donald, and was it her plan Ooh. all along to kill him with the microwave? Because she, in the oh. early part of the film, was, seemed to be the one responsible for, like, she installing was there. Pa- it. Yeah, installing yeah. it, patting the box. You know, she kind of pat the box when she walked yeah, in the house. Yeah, I didn't at one think point. about. I didn't think about it this way. Neither did I. Yeah. Jeez, yes. Shit, Jay. Wow. It's a whole thing that they throw at you right at the end, and you're like, "This is some like, you know, surface level movie." And then all of a sudden, boom! They hit you boom. with a one-two punch, and you're like, "Wait a minute! Yeah. There might be more." So here. this could have been not just a horror movie, not just a porno, but kind of a reverse wife kills her husband, Black Widow sort of movie. Right, sort of like like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith 
but with a oh, microwave. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Like, my my initial thought was, no, she couldn't have installed it, but it was installed wrong, so fuck it, maybe she did it. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Her yeah. plan, all she would have gotten him, but he got her first. Kind of. Well, that just raises my score right there. See? They leave you with that dangling question, and the, the evidence do. is there. They hated each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The real um, microwave massacre... Should have been <laughs> May massacring Donald. Wow, I I mean, we're totally it's a, believe it's a, that guys. It's a real liberal use of the word massacre. When <laughs> either way is one person, but <laughs> true, true. The last question I'd like to address it was why did May's eyes glow in the end? Is she a demon? <laughs> well, clearly she was a demon, Jay. She was a microwave demon. Right. I mean, there had to have been something, right? Like, there, there yeah. is a supernatural element happening here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't make a big deal out of it, but that's the only conclusion you can make if you take <laughs> this movie at face value. Because, like, even earlier on, like, her head is turning around when he's not looking, and it's lots of things are going on with her head, especially. So it's not like the glowing eyes come out of, you know, nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> but that kind of, like, is the... The confirmation that, oh, uh, yeah, it's just not in your mind that her head is spinning around there. You know, it happens through the entire movie. Mm -hmm. I, I was initially going to say it's just what you did in movies. Like, that was my response. Like, <laughs> kind of a just production wise. That's what happens in a movie, right? Yeah, the eyes glow at the end. They do a thing. It doesn't have to make sense. But since you commented and mentioned how her fucking head moves around and shit like that through the house, I didn't notice that watching. And now I'm having a fucking hard time. Maybe I missed a bunch of subtle shit in this thing. <laughs> I'm having a hard time with it. You know, they what the filmmakers did was they juxtaposed uh, <laughs> Donald's deadpan delivery and they lulled you into this this just comfortable sense of watching when and really, if you look deeper, word. there is all this stuff happening. But I do have to say, though, as subtle as that stuff is, the sexism, not subtle at all. No. No. Not subtle. No. Misogyny, no, not. not subtle at all. No. No, it is not. Yeah, pretty much front and center. Yeah. So, um, we, got, we, we, we unpacked a lot, but now I think it's hmm. time to do some ratings. Rating time. Um, I thought about this, and you know, what to rate this in. I mean, there's a lot of choices, but I just kept coming back to that crab sandwich. So, uh, <laughs> I'd like to rate this movie in uh, one to 100 crabs, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listeners. It probably uh, yes. doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but uh, rating and in inside jokes. Yes. Chris, what do you got? Oh God. Okay. Well, first off, I got to say, this movie is just complete and utter trash. <laughs> I mean, there is very little to redeem this movie. It is sexist. There's so much objectivization going on. And it is completely offensive if you're watching this with the wrong crowd. The story is really non-existent. And <laughs> no. it's just nonstop sexual humor and just very lowest common denominator kind of garbage. But at the same time, as much as he got a rip on it, I loved <laughs> Vernon's deadpan delivery. God, damn it. God, damn it. God. I mean, and his whole shtick is just, oh my God, it's so dated and terrible, but there's something like just, oh, I, I loved it. <laughs> it was so terrible, but I loved it for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I really don't think this movie oh. would not work at all with, without oh. him. So, oh my God. Oh my God. I did I not expect say, to hear you say that. Oh my God. I thought I laughed through this entire goddamn thing. <laughs> God damn Probably God. mostly <laughs> for the wrong reasons. <laughs> but oh my God, it's so terrible. But I gotta, I'm, oh my God, I'm gonna kill myself after this. But I'm gonna rate this. 80 crabs, please. What the fuck? Nice. <laughs> oh, my nice. God. It was amazing. What God. the fuck did you just say? <laughs> oh. Hey, as bad as zombie biker warrior babe was last week, I had, I needed something to cleanse my palate. <laughs> how, how is th this? You... What? what? I mean, I no, the movie's garbage. Don't right get now. me wrong. This movie is complete trash. 
<laughs> there's nothing redeemable about it. But I, I Except still. Except you rated it I an 82. Couldn't, I couldn't help but like it for all the terrible reasons. <laughs> I don't know if that makes me a bad person or what. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but Mike, oh my god, okay. oh, Mike, what do you have? I stand by my score. Oh god, this is this is a artifact. This is this is definitely a piece of like. B movie indie fucking seventies trash. Um, there's a lot like it, and a lot of them do it way better. <laughs> um, but but there are some good bits in it. As but it's 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 as if someone like like to bring up Kentucky Fried Movie again. <laughs> it's like that that movie is just a bunch of skits, right? That are all gross misogynist skits mostly um and is this someone took one of those things and said let's do it for 70 minutes we will keep the same amount of good jokes and we'll fill in the rest of bad jokes and uh, it's just it's uh, as much as is it's fine if you watch it and you, you i just don't think there's anything much to it like there's not you could spend your time better i think it's with this <laughs> Um, if you wanted to check it out, I'd say do it. It's kind of it's a fairly well known thing, and if you haven't seen it and you, that's a thing you want to do, go for it. I don't think you'll hate yourself. I just don't think there's much going for it. Um, so, you know, eh, fifty. Fifty. Okay. Fifty. Uh, fifty. You know, uh, crabs, please. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is like. Fast food. It's like something that you <laughs> pop, pop in a microwave. Um, it's not it, going to give you a ton, but overall it's going to be kind of enjoyable. I did like just sort of the random and nonsensical stuff that happened, <laughs> and I also liked Jackie Vernon's performance. It's just so <laughs> weird. Um, and I loved the ending with the the extra layers that they added on. Yeah, it is offensive. There is some some offensive stuff. I would argue that we've seen some worse offensive things than what happens yeah, it's, here. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's bad, but it's not like Yeah, it's know. yeah. It, it gets way worse. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, guys, when you eat so much Parisian cuisine, <laughs> did, I, did I say that right, Chris? I think um, it's cuisine. Oh, Parisian <laughs> cuisine. When you eat that so much, sometimes you just want a hot dog. And this movie is that hot dog. So I'm going to give it 83 crabs. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair, fine. Oh, God. On the next episode of B Movie Mania. All right. So next time, you know, let's just. Let's just call this one a sci-fi palate cleanser from Microwave okay. Massacre, okay? Now, I know everyone here really likes Sean Connery, right? Do you say he's, you know, who's who's not a fan of Sean Connery, right? Oh boy. Mhm. Mhm. I I know what this uh, one. Yeah. Is. Oh yeah. You call yourselves fans of Christopher Lambert? <laughs> Wait, do I? Oh, oh yeah! Well, now okay. I okay. Oh. I loved the shit out of this movie in high school. I haven't seen it since. Is it what I? But think? let's yeah, just yeah. say, guys, that there can be only one. We're gonna watch. <laughs> we're gonna watch two. Highlander Two: The Quickening. Two? Oh, two? <laughs> two. Oh, no. Oh yeah. Oh shit! And I was. And before you before you say there can be only one, because that's what they say in the movie. But technically, there are like three or four edits of this garbage going around. We're watching the original edit, Highlander 2, The Quickening. Okay, where okay. can we find that at? That is on yeah. Amazon Prime. All right, sweet. That'll be fun. Two's fucking... <laughs> this is the one that people claim isn't canon, right? Isn't this the one that gets batshit bonkers? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we've all seen it at one time or another, but I haven't seen it in 25 years. 30 years. Hell yeah. No, this is... Yeah. So it's like thinking, aliens or something in it, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there can be only one. This 
Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Microwave Effect! When a microwave is running, there are microwaves being absorbed by the food or liquid. If there's nothing in the microwave, the waves reflect between the cooking chamber and the tube and will burn out the magnetron. Microwave cooking requires some water in the food in order to work.